Hello and welcome to part 29, which is a focus up on how, a focus on rather, on something uh, called slope intercept form. I'm going to write this slope intercept form. And I'm going to talk about how you get into slope intercept form, talk about the usefulness of slope intercept form, and in the end, you're going to figure out what some slope intercept form is. Now, a really quick rundown, which is what I'm going to need in order to get started with this lecture, so to speak, is what slope really slope intercept form is for. And it's only for linear equations. And a linear equation, if you might recall from part 20, the next part, which will be part 20 or 30, or though if you are watching these in consecutive order and don't really care, a linear equation is any equation that when graphed forms a line, like such as what we've been doing. It's all, um, you know, if you have a linear equation, you can get it into slope intercept form. And slope intercept form is often considered best form, so to speak, of how to place an equation. Best form because of its usefulness. As the name might imply, you will be able to see what the slope is and what the intercept of the line is. Now, the intercept, before we begin, is another, another broad term that I want to go over. Intercept is um, the point, uh, the points of an equation where either x or or y equal zero. So, for example, let's 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 start taking a, an equation and see what we can do with this. Uh, let's say we had y equals two x plus seven, and we want to figure out what the y-intercept is. So where this line will intercept the y-axis, well, if you think about it, wherever this line will intercept the y-axis will mean that x is going to be equal to 0. So you're not, you're not going to want to move left or right anywhere. You just want to see y. So let's, let's, let's solve in 0 for x, because we will know the value of x, and then I'll be 7. So the intercept of y will be 7. And if we want to figure out the x-intercept, 2x plus 7, we have to make, logically speaking, y equals 0. So 0 equals 2x plus 7. I'm going to take 7 off both sides, make this negative 7, equals 2x divided by 2. And then we're going to, we're going to get x equals, uh, I believe that's 0.3, no, 3.5, negative 3.5 or something. All right. So that, those are what intercepts are. So the slope-intercept form will give you the, your slope of the line right in the equation itself, slope of the line, and the y-intercept of the line. And I'm going to show you how slope-intercept form becomes useful in solving for, in graphing equations, because I'm going to delete all this. I'm going to regenerate my equation. And let's say for now, uh, to begin this lecture, so to speak, uh, I have the equation, this happy old equation, 3x plus 2y equals 6. Now, I'm pretty happy-go-lucky equation. Now, slope-intercept form. The way you write slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. That is the universally standardly accepted way of the slope-intercept form. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of what these variables mean. You, are, you already know what x and y mean, but m is the slope, as you learned last tutorial. m is the slope, and b is going to be, you guessed it, the y-intercept. And again, the y-intercept means where the line will intercept y, so when x equals 0, what is going to mean? And if you think about it, I guess it kind of makes sense. So now the first things first, in order to get this into this form, would mean, well, let's take a look at this. This form has y isolated. So what we're going to do now is, logically, isolate the y. So I'm going to do this silently. Again, you should be pretty familiar with isolating equations. Now I'm going to take it off right here, and we're gonna, this 2y is going to come down. But wait a second. The x term comes before the b term. So there's always the x monomial before the b monomial. So we're going to want to make this negative 3x plus 6 instead of 6 minus 3x. And we're still not done yet because we need to have y isolated. So we're going to divide by 2 on both sides. And that's going to get this out. So we're going to have the y. So we already are in slope-intercept form as soon as we finish this. So negative 3x negative 3x divided by 2. Remember what I said, you can just pull this variable down and make it negative 3 halves x. And then 6 divided by 2 is plus 3. 
So let's box this answer in, and let's see what we got here. So we basically took this equation and turned it right into, we isolated y. And these correlate with each other. So let's try to see if we can figure out what m and y, uh, what m and b mean in this equation. So I'm going to write m, and we're going to write b. And we're going to have to get constants now, because now we're dealing in an actual scenario, in an actual equation. So m, the slope of the line, will be 3 halves, negative 3 divided by 2. And b, the y-intercept, as it's called, is going to be just 3, because we take the b, so 3. So using this equation, we've already figured out the slope of the line, and we figured out the y-intercept of the line. Now, how does this become useful? Well, if you recall what I told you, you only need two points to graph an equation, correct? I kind of drilled that, but I always like using three, but, you know, you always just need two. So I'm going to show you a little trick that we use in order to graph equations. First, we start with the y-intercept, because that's a point, right? So the y-intercept is uh, three, so we're going to draw a dot right there on the three. That's the three. That's the point where this line is going to intersect the... Um, the y-axis. In reality, the actual definition of this term is 0, 3. Remember, x goes first and x is 0, so 0, 3. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, use slope in order to graph this next graph the next point. And if you recall, slope is rise over run. So the first thing is how up or down you're going to have to go. So we're going to draw arrows right there, and then we're going to draw a big arrow like that. So up or down. Well, this is telling us we're going to have to go down 3 and then over 2. So from that first equation, from that first point, we're going to go down 3 places, 1, 2, 3, and then over 2, 1, 2. And then that's going to be the equation right there, down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 2, just because I like using three equations. And now we have three points that are, our, that are legitimate points on this line. And what we're going to do now is we are going to just draw an, draw an equation draw a line that represents these three points because we've already we've already basically we've we've already figured out three points for this equation so yeah this is how slope you know, uh, intercept form becomes you know really really handy because it basically saves uh, a lot of the work that we're going to have to do all right let's i don't think you guys quite believe that this is this is really true and this is really happening so let's try doing it the other way, which means I'm going to sub I'm going to give three values for 3x plus 2y equals 6, and we're going to solve it out the old-fashioned way. So 3x plus 2y equals 6. So when x equals 1, uh, 3 times 1 plus x equals 1, uh, when x equals 1, so it's 3, 3 plus 2y equals 6, and then 2y equals 3, and then y equals 3 halves. So 1 and 3 halves. 1 and 3 halves, which is 1.5. So it should be, yeah, that's about right. That's about right in the center there. Um, let's choose another one. We already figured out the value of 2, actually, because 2 is the other point that we graphed, if you recall. Let's do 3. 3 should, uh, actually, let's do, let's do, oh, let's do one that's going to be whole. Let's do 7. Let's do 7. Seven's a good one. So 3 times 7 equals... 20, 21 plus 2y equals 6. So now we're going to subtract 6 from t uh, 21 from 6. So 6 minus 21, which becomes negative 15. And then y divided by 2 becomes negative 7.5. So now we get that this should be 3 comma negative 7.6 or 7 comma 7, negative 7.5. Which is about right. I mean, as you recall, this this isn't doesn't exactly look like a real line. So yeah, this 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 equation did work because you know, as you can see, it it really did work. And if I actually drew my equation out perfectly, if I actually drew my um my line perfectly, we have a truly perfect equation. I'm gonna do one more. I realize this is taking a little bit extra time than need be, but um, I feel like it's necessary. So we're gonna try to use so slope intercept form in order to graph this equation, this equation right here. So first things first is to isolate y. So we're going to drag 3x onto the one side. And I think you guys are ready for this trick. Essentially what we do when we subtract 3x and there's no other 3x on the other side, we basically make 3x negative. So we just make next, we just bring it onto the other side and make 3x negative. So negative 3x 
plus 16. The 16 remains positive. We're going to divide by 4. So we're going to get negative 3 fourths. I'm, I'm skipping a lot of steps. Hopefully you guys can still understand what I'm doing, even though I'm skipping a bunch of steps. Basically what I'm doing, I divided by 4, but I didn't feel like writing it out because, you know, in real math, you don't really write any of that stuff out. So this is our slope-intercept form. And if you recall, first things first, this means our y-intercept is going to be at 4. So I'm going to graph this right at 4. And... Um, we have to take, go down 3, so 1, 2, 3, and over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I have 3 points, and I'm going to want to draw a line. So, bada bing, bada boom, and bada bing, bada bing. Nope, messed up a little bit. Um, I'm going to want to go for this one. I'm going to go right here and just continue on right here to make it look like it's real line. Yep, that looks pretty. That looks pretty straight. Okay, and then bada bing. That looks like a pretty. That looks like a pretty substantial equation. I'm just going to choose a random equation that looks like it. That random point. Uh, negative four looks like it's negative seven. So it's negative four equal negative seven. Let's let's let's. Uh, no, negative four equal positive seven rather. Let's figure this out. So negative four x. So seven equals negative three fourths times negative four plus four, and this is going to be negative three fourths. So negative three fourths, which is negative point seven five times four negative four, is going to well, that's going to wind up becoming positive three because these negatives are going to cancel. So this becomes positive three plus four, and voila, seven equals seven. So, slope-intercept form is possibly the most accepted way of doing, um, of, of uh, finding the equation of, find the, finding the slope of an equation. And before we go, I just wanted to present to you one thing. What if we had an equation that looked like this? It went straight up and down, and I ask you to find the slope of this equation. Well, what you do is, remember, slope is rise over run. So how far up and down you go over how far left and right you go. So up and down is really, if we want to find the slope of this equation, we really just, we go down, I mean, we go up or down, it really doesn't, there's really no definition, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't really notice, so I guess positive one, but we don't go anywhere. So then we get one, and one divided by zero. And so you can't divide anything by zero. Divisible, division by zero is just, it's not doesn't make logical sense. You can't divide by something that that doesn't exist. So the answer to this slope is undefined. There is no mathematician in the world who could tell you what that's what the slope of that line is because there's no definition for it. In our human nature, we cannot classify it. Um, that's about all I have for you in this part. So we basically went over slope-intercept form is how we can use it, and then undetermined form, undefined form rather. Those are very. Those are. That's a very important aspect of um of, of math. So um, that's all I really have for graphing. Actually, believe it or not, what we're gonna do in the next part is we're gonna do uh well part thirty one I believe we're gonna figure out um whether an equation is linear or whether it's um whether it's linear or whether it's nonlinear, and that's gonna be pretty fun, guys. All right, see see you later.